Welcome to another tantalizing video episode brought to you by z 2 HTV. On this video, we will be giving you some facts on a very interesting topic. The biggest fields in the Nigerian music industry. Sounds intriguing, right? Yes, of course. Before we go into the video proper, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thank you. Also, do not forget to turn on your post notifications and share the video with your family and friends. The Nigerian music industry over the years has grown to become the frontier and driving force of the Afrobeat to the world movement. It is no doubt that Africa's biggest music stars are from Nigeria. The likes of Davido, Burner Boy and Whiskey have pushed the Afrobeat music to the world, to the other side of the world and have gained massive acceptance. But all of this has not prevented the Afrobeat heavyweights from having clashes and beefs between each other. In this video, we'll be giving you the root information and gist of some of Nigeria's biggest music fields. So sit back and enjoy while we take you through it. The video and risk it. They are regarded by many as the two greatest of the industry. Davido and Whiskey have been at the top of the music industry but have quite condoned the longest feud in the Nigerian music industry as a whole. Despite the fact that they were once termed as intimate and close friends, Whiskey and Davido are the current greatest rivals in the genre of Afrobeat. Their feud started several years ago when their fame sparked. They should now hit songs consistently and almost averaging themselves in all results and individual honors, risking that they would gain mouth watering fan bases. This is where their feud laid its root. Whiskey who would go on and dominate the Afrobeat genre and Davido who would also thrill millions of people and also make his music cross the borders with his rhythm in the nearest future tried to keep their bond but the heaviness of their fans and buoyancy lured them to rivalry. Shortly after their grudges were reversed, they couldn't hold back and clashed online as well. This inspired their fans to even kick off daily rivalry and dispute as a match to be unlimited and compatible even till date. That is where the famous 30BG vs Whiskey FC rivalry on the internet has come from. However, David and Whiskey in recent times have portrayed an optimistic reconciliation after what seemed to be a decade of feuds between the two Afrobeat giants. They were spotted in the club two years ago, hugging passionately in several interviews. They also have vowed that they are not pushing each other's nerves. In reality, David and Whiskey seem like they are good friends. Even Davido confirmed in a recent interview that Whiskey called to check up on him on a number of occasions after the loss of his son. The field is only being infused daily by their fans, both on and off the net. Would we be seeing a Davido and Whiskey collab in the years to come? <sighs> only time will tell. Olamide vs Don Jazzy This particular fight was not expected at all. It happened suddenly and it will go on to be one that the music industry will never forget. It was at the 2015 Hedis Award which was held on the eve of 2016. An enraged Alamidi had taken to the stage with his YBN record label signees while accompanying Adikuni Go to accept his award for best alternative act for the year. And he would soon after take the microphone to state his signee Leo Kesh was the deserving nominee of the next rated award which had gone to Ricardo Banks. Living in a huff, he had dropped the microphone and his cup on the stage. This caused a big stare. Don Jazzy had soon responded when he climbed to the stage to accept his award for special recognition, ending his sanguine address thus saying, Egbo Olamide, if you want the car, come and collect it. This had further enraged Alamide, who took to his Twitter to express his anger and displeasure at Don Jazzy, attacking his business ethics and issuing a threat to him not to come to the mainland. Of course, Don Jazzy was at the island. So much banters were thrown here and there, and the feud was looking like it wasn't going to end. Eventually, business mogul and billionaire Ali Kodangote had to step in to, to broker peace and resolve the feuding label heads. They both would go on to make a song tied to the Skelimba and this was a smash hit record. Tiwa Savage and Shei Shei Another beef that caused the stare in the industry was that between two top-notch Nigerian female artists, Tiwa Savage and Shei Shei. 
Keishi, who had for so long accused the Afrobeat queen, Tiwa, of an alleged song plagiarism, was cut short of an intense version of aggrieved Tiwa Savage after she tried to condone hypocrisy in a saloon they unintentionally bonded for beauty in 2021. Sheishi, who before the feud with Tiwa went it, has been parading the need for the concerned citizens to be convinced that Tiwa Savage stole her songs and released them. While the saga speculated, Tiwa Savage never uttered a single word. However, Kama would in the future slam Sheishi after she attempted hypocrisy. While the two mistakenly met in the same salon in Lagos, Sheishi tried to embrace Tiwa Savage, ignoring what she had once accused her of. An irritated Tiwa issued her a stern warning to stay away from her. In the viral video, the two were seen condoning a clash of tongues as their team restrained a possible physical approach between them. This all happened in 2021. And in the same year, it seemed like they resolved their differences because later that year, Tiwa Savage was posted a post made by Sheishi on her smash hit record, Somebody Son, and added a smiley emoji, thanking everyone for the love and support. We hope that died down because it would have been very, very messy. MI and Vector. A feud that will go down in the annals of Nigerian music industry. It had spanned over a decade and had gone from being hints of a supremacy battle between Emma and Vector to a full on showdown of traded club bags online, a rap bars, and diss tracks. By the eve of 2019, the beef was the talk of the industry and it also had its own, you might call it, good side. Because the grief from Snake These Lines esconded amidst intricate flows to unforgettable records like MI's blood drawing Viper and Vector's equally brutal and ruthless Judas the Rat. Both a direct address to the other, it had brought the rap veterans beef to the fore and had been a trending topic with their records topping both local and international charts. It was indeed a good time and bad time for rap. Eventually, they had buried their hatchet on the platter of gold as offered by Hennessy, a brand whose prominent ciphers had been one of their bones of contention. It was good while it lasted. There you have it. The Formos have been one of the most iconic and unforgettable babes in the Nigerian music industry. A very interesting lineup which unsurprisingly involves mostly the biggest names in the game. You might say a good percentage of all these babes are followed by fan base from all indications. But the artists also are humans and sometimes can't hold back their emotions. Anyways, it's a bittersweet experience because as much as we don't want fights, we also want to see who in reality are not really placed with each other. But generally, we hope for more of peace and togetherness between the musical acts as they take the continent's sound to the world. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not and share this video with family and friends. Bye for now.